Hi, welcome to Quiltinator.com. I'm Michelle Johnson. Today we're continuing with our stained glass block. And I finally finished the other row that I had to I'll rip out and trim down to size. And what we're going to do today is actually attach it to the first piece we did. If you remember, it was quilted in the Calypso color. It was. This is from Connecting Threads. It's 100% cotton. This um, was the half hearts that we did kind of for Valentine's Day. And this is my marker to show where we are going to connect to. And so what I've done so far is I've just straightened off this edge because the other side looked like this. And now what we're going to do is basically the same thing. We're going to take this piece and we are going to figure out what size backing we need for this. And we want it just to be about a half an inch to an inch longer. So we'll just take this. Have a little bit on either side. Give a little bit. Just take our scissors. And then this backing piece. This can be put aside for another piece. And what I'm going to do is attach fusible fleece to the wrong side, and then I will see you back in just a second. Okay, I'm back, and what I've done is applied fusible fleece to the backing fabric, and I put right side to right side, pretty side to pretty side, toward each other, and then the top, I also did the same thing, pretty side to pretty side, and what I did was my marker, which showed um, that I was going 15, 14, 13. And then I left my numbers on here so I would know 12, 11, 10. And match these two and then just pin across the top. And then all, you're, all I'm going to do is there's a little bit of bagginess to this front piece. It's, got, it's on the bias so it's got a little give and it has a little bit of shifting whenever I pieced it and ironed it. And so what I'm going to do is put the baggy bottom because it'll the feed dogs will help gather in some of this and, and it'll hopefully make, lay nice and smooth. And so I'm going to put this on the top and I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch with my regular quarter of an inch foot and I'm going to um, up the stitch to a 3 instead of a 2.5, which is what it normally is. You can use um, your even feed foot, your walking foot, if you like. I'm just not going to do that because I'm going to uh, do some other things here in just a little bit. And um, I will meet you back in just a second after I've sewn this together. I know I told you this was quilt um, as you go method 1. But really, it's kind of a flip and squish, and I'll show you. Um, I've already ironed, or I mean, I've already sewn, and it did suck in some of the gathers, so it looks really good. Right now, what I'm doing is just pressing the seam to set it, and then we do our flip and squish. Because we flip this, you can see, take this, we flip that, and now what we have to do is just squish the seams, just iron them. There will be a little bump here in the at the ditch, but it's not really any any more of a bump than um, 
some of these seams because you know you have several pieces being joined together so you have several seam allowances being joined and they make you know they're kind of bulky and so all we do is just iron it in flip it over And I'm going to do more free motion quilting into this next section with my Opti Hoops. And that will really hold it down. But what I'm going to do here at the ends, just to kind of pull it a little bit, and I'm not going to quilt just that spot yet. All I'm doing is taking and just pinning kind of where I know it's been smoothed out. And all you're doing is squishing the seam down. versatile ways of doing a quilt as you go method and you can see why I call it flip and squish not a very fancy name but my friend Karen taught this to me and at first the first time we talked about it we didn't do this part what we did is we left each piece open and then hand stitched these two together but after we did the first one her daughter-in-law talked with her and said why don't you just put them together and, and flip it over instead of having to do hand work which is great in my book. So all you have to do is just keep pressing it till you get that seam as flat as you can get it. And like I said, once it's in the Opti Hoops, it's going to hold it together. So you don't even need to pin it unless you really want to. So that's it for this lesson of Quilt As You Go using these beautiful blocks. And, and I hope you'll give this a try. It really is easy and it really makes quick work instead of all hand work type stuff. I'm Michelle Johnson. This is Quiltinator.com and I'm getting back to quilting.